So welcome. Today we're going to talk to a little bit about LinkedIn. I know some of you have seen it and probably know what it is, but probably you set up your account ages ago and didn't come back to it. The reason I'm here with you today is because I use LinkedIn a lot and I have used it very effectively throughout my career for different things. Um, last year, LinkedIn named me one of their top voices and it has been uh, a real eye opener for me, which means that I now help other people do better with LinkedIn. And that's what I hope I can do for you today. So if you want to know, if you this barcode, this QR code has been generated by LinkedIn. You can generate it on any of your uh, mobile apps for LinkedIn. And if you hold your phone camera over this uh, QR code, then you will be able to get to my LinkedIn profile. And when you get to my LinkedIn profile, you can choose whether you want to follow me, which means that you get some of my, um, some of the posts that I make and come up on your wall, or if you want to connect with me and you can choose to do either of those things and remind me where I met, remind me where I met you. I'll show the code again later so that you don't worry if you missed it. Now, this is the most dangerous thing to per personal branding I ever hear. My work will speak for itself. This time has passed. There is no more work that speaks for itself. You need to speak for your work. And the good news is this is the best time in history that we've ever had for you, for you to do the speaking for your work. It is amazing how much control you can have over your reputation, about the nature of your work, and how you turn up in the online world. I know you don't think so, but Wait, let me show you how you can use LinkedIn to really control the way you turn up in the world. And it's important because today what we're talking about is essentially your reputation. Everything is hinges on your reputation, whether it's your social networks, whether it's your professional networks, whether you want to have a job, whatever it is you want to do, a lot depends on your reputation. And today that reputation mostly lives online. And the good thing about it living online is if you know what you're doing, you get to control it. You could control how your reputation turns up online. It's actually a terrible time to be a famous person. Can I say famous people have so little control over how they turn up online, but you and me, regular people who haven't had anything sensational happen to us, we, we can turn up online just the way we are and we can control some of it and I'll show you how. Now, why did I choose LinkedIn? Why is it LinkedIn is my tool? Why is it not Twitter? Why is it not uh, Facebook? Why is it not Instagram? I have accounts on all those things. If you are on Twitter and you'd like to follow me on Twitter, I'm LinkedIn Lavinia and you can follow me on Twitter too. I have accounts on various other social platforms, but I've chosen to make LinkedIn my home for a very specific, actually a very specific three reasons. And the well, first, I have 740 million reasons before I have my three reasons. 740. It's growing without losing any of its integrity. And that's the important part about LinkedIn. The LinkedIn that you know is this. This is the LinkedIn that I started with too. The way it started was it's entirely about, <clears throat> about your, your job. So you only use LinkedIn if you wanted to get a job and usually in an English speaking country. In Germany, you would have used Zing and in different countries, you would have used different networks. It was essentially only in the English speaking world. But now even in Germany, if you're looking for a job, you need to be on LinkedIn. You need to be on Zing too, to be fair, but you wanna be on LinkedIn as well. So this is how it all started. This is why how I started with my LinkedIn journey like 15 years ago. I put my I use LinkedIn as my online resume, which is probably where a lot of you still have your LinkedIn profile. Then the other good thing about LinkedIn was moving around the world, as many of us do, since this is a group of people with international lives and international careers, you move around the world and it's hard to take your network with you. You meet people, you spend a lot of time cultivating networks, and then how do you take it with you? You take it with you with putting it onto LinkedIn. Then you know where people go. People know where you go. And when they change jobs and they change positions, you can still stay connected with them. You can still find them. And so this is how, but this has been a tool that LinkedIn has had from the very beginning. But in 2016, Microsoft bought LinkedIn and that changed the entire game. LinkedIn is not just about jobs and networking. LinkedIn is about so much more now. Today's LinkedIn, Today's LinkedIn is all about thought leadership. Today's LinkedIn is all about lead creation. So you can find your clients on LinkedIn. You can find the journalists that you want to connect with on LinkedIn. You can find potential 
where you want, who you want to sell things to. It's an amazing way to connect. And I'm going to show you a few of the tools that are available and how you can just use what's within LinkedIn to find your clients and how you can use some of the way that LinkedIn's algorithm works to generate thought leadership. But the most important thing you need to know is you must make sure you have your name is correct, your headline, you spent some time thinking about what you want to write in your headline. And the third thing is your photo. This is all your shop window. Imagine like how you will turn up in the world. And these are the three things that turn up in every single search of you. So you want to make sure you've spent a little bit of time. You not just put it down just because it's there. If you have a LinkedIn account, it's turning up anyway. Why don't you just control it? And if you don't have a LinkedIn account, something else is turning up. And the internet doesn't like a void. It just fills it with nonsense. So if you really want to control the way you turn up in the world, this is the way to do it. Use LinkedIn to do that. And how do you create a good photo? Here are some tips. Here are my top tips on how you create a good photo. You want to make sure you're looking straight into the camera. You want to make sure you're smiling and you want to be dressed the way you would normally be dressed for work. Whatever that looks like. If you're a tattooist, then, you know, Turn up with tattoos and all. If you are a professional clown, then so turn up that way. Whatever it is that you do, if you're in a job like a, a lawyer, then a conservative outfit is more suitable, then turn up in a conservative outfit. Um, these are, you can screenshot this. These are my top tips for how you can uh, turn up looking absolutely professional in your profile photo. Here are some examples. It doesn't have to be boring. It doesn't have to be stayed. It can have lots of different ways to turn up. And I will also share my tools and how to create this. These are my top two tools to do to use for photos so that you can create all those fantastic effects like changing the background and, um, and, and cutting out backgrounds and creating all kinds of things. Both Pixel Cut and Background Eraser are available for free. You can download them and then you can use them to change. So if you happen to have a good photo of yourself, but you have a very busy background, make sure you use one of these tools and you can just pop those things away, but make sure it's only one person in that photo and that person is you and you are looking straight into the camera. Um, another tool you can use, this is my real secret top tip that I only share with my clients. This is uh, photofeeler.com. It's a fantastic, fantastic, fantastic tool. It allows you to check with the, with the world, with the internet, what they think about your photo. So once you've got a photo, this is the photo I use across the internet for myself. And it's a great photo for me. I like it very much. It suits um, my brand and it it's ranks really high. So photofeeler.com will rank you on these three criteria and you can just ask the world what they think of your photo. And you can try it, for instance, in black and white with a pop of color. You can try it um, standing further back a little bit, a bit further forward as you decide, try it out and see what works. And then you can decide based on data which photo works for you. And I know I spend a lot of time talking about photos, but they're so important. So when people look for you, they see the right photo, the photo that you want them to see. Now, if you didn't know this already, you're going to be Googled. You are absolutely going to be Googled. And if you're going to be Googled, you want to be able to control what happens. So these are the three things you must do on LinkedIn to ensure that you are Googled in the proper way, that when people Google you, your choice of words turns up. So the first thing is set your private, this is not the place to be private, LinkedIn is not the place for this. Make sure you set your settings to public so people can see your photo, the photo that you have chosen, instead of some dodgy photo that turned up somewhere, you know, in your yearbook or something that's been indexed. So make sure that if your LinkedIn photo is a good photo, it will be indexed by the search engine. And so it will turn up as the first photo. So isn't that great? You get to choose which photo turns up when people search you. So make sure your privacy settings are set to public. Um, and I, I just said, you know, your photo, your headline, and, um, and your, um, your banner will be indexed. So make sure that means the Google search engine will go in and look for it. Yeah. So make sure you, you've got it set exactly the way you want. And the third thing in Google that's, uh, sorry, the third thing in LinkedIn that's that's indexed is your, are your articles. Your articles, if you decide to write articles and you decide that you're going to publish an article on LinkedIn, that will also be indexed. I wrote an article two years ago about imposter syndrome. Till today, I tell you, I still get invited to speak about the topic. And that's just based off one single article. So it's amazing how it will turn up. So when people search for me, it comes up. It's one of the topics I speak about. I'm a professional speaker. I speak mostly on chain and on personal branding, but I also do lots of confidence related topics. And so that turns out because I wrote about it 
on LinkedIn. I don't need a New York Times article. I can just self-publish on LinkedIn and it will turn up on a Google search. So when you decide what you want to post on LinkedIn, I suggest you have three criteria as to whether the post should go or not onto LinkedIn. People seem to feel a lot of angst about whether they should post this, what they should post, whether they should post. So look, there's only basically three criteria. Um, is it something that entertains? Does it, is it something that educates or is it something that inspires? And maybe it does two or all three of them. Uh, but basically, it should do one of these. If it doesn't do any of these, it doesn't belong on LinkedIn. That's the basic criteria. This is easy to remember and an easy way for you to decide. And it's an easy way not to be afraid of posting on LinkedIn. These are the top types of posts that do well on LinkedIn. You can screenshot this too if you like. Um, LinkedIn's algorithm rewards dwell time, which means the more time that people spend on your posts, the more engagement it has. And this is the big problem a lot of people have with LinkedIn. They're not creating posts that people want to linger over. So um, in on LinkedIn today, as of today, the best types of posts to, um, to post are polls. Polls are when you ask a question and you offer four possible options as answers. Yeah. So you could even ask something like, which is your favorite season? You know, is it summer, a winter, a fall or, or a spring? And that's four options. Yeah. And people can vote on it. Polls are doing extraordinarily well at the moment with the LinkedIn algorithm. So that's the number one for engagement. This is the thing you want to do. The second are carousels when you upload a PDF document, like these slides, for instance, I could upload these and then they would form a carousel and people would just keep swiping through. And you want to make sure your carousel has at least um, five slides for it to make sense. Um, then text with image. I do really well with text. For, for me, actually, my number one um, post, my most viral post ever is text with image. I still find these do very well. Videos do well, but you must make sure that um, you write enough information in the caption section so that people know what to expect from your video. Because a video only counts, a video view only counts on LinkedIn if someone watches it for three seconds. So if they're not watching it for three seconds, it's not counting. So you want a thumb stopping video. So you want to get straight to the point with your video on LinkedIn. And you want to make sure it's got captions because most people view and it because the automatic default on LinkedIn is a silent video. So here are some other options that you can do. Now, you'll see that seventh on the list is a post with an external link. LinkedIn does not like external links. So if you're posting on LinkedIn, please make sure you're posting native content. Um, and you can put your links into the comments um, so that people can find it. And you can just say in your post that you post the link in the comments. So these are the three biggest mistakes I see people make on LinkedIn. So they post and ghost, which means they just put a post up and then they run away. They don't take care of their post. They don't engage with anyone who's engaging with their post. This is absolute no-no on LinkedIn. The other is they post and pray. They have no idea what they what, why they posted that. It looked like it was interesting. Whether it was in their industry or not, who knows? They just post and hope that it does well. The third is people who just post when they're inspired. Something big came along. The boss said, you know, let's post this. And so they posted it. None of this works. All of this will result in you thinking LinkedIn is terrible for engagement and I better spend my time elsewhere. So let me tell you three ways to get over that. The first is when you post, there's a golden hour, which means the first hour after you post something on LinkedIn, you want to nestmate it. You want to make sure that you have posted the link in the comments. You want to make sure that anyone who has commented on your post, you reply to those comments. You want to have as much of a conversation as possible with those people. So you really want to nestmate your content for about, about an hour, at least after you post. Uh, the second is to have a plan. Um, without a plan, uh, without knowing exactly what areas you want to post in, it's, the LinkedIn algorithm doesn't know what to do with you. It doesn't know what you are. It doesn't know where you belong in its universe. And so it won't know how to feed your content out. So make sure you have a plan and some consistency around it. The LinkedIn algorithm absolutely rewards consistency. I don't post every day and consistency doesn't have to be every day. Whatever consistent looks like to you will work. It doesn't matter exactly what that timing is. So this is my most recent post. If you are a woman out there, I highly encourage you to please join us. The 11th of October is the International Day of the Girl. And in the run up to the International Day of the Girl on the 11th of October, we are running a This Little Girl is Me campaign. This is part of my work as part of Inspiring Girls International. And this post has completely dominated on Instagram and on LinkedIn. As you can see, it has for me 340,000, actually considerably more by now. Um, it's, it's at nearly 400,000 
4,000 views with nearly 4,000 reactions. Uh, this post is doing extraordinarily well. Almost every woman I know who's been posting her This Little Girl Is Me story um, has had fantastic engagement on it. It's inspiring. It's a great way to tell your career story. And it's a great way to be inspirational. So go ahead and tell your Little Girl Is Me story. You can go to my LinkedIn, find mine, and then you'll have the guidelines of how to do that. Now, that also, that takes me to the little known fact about LinkedIn. LinkedIn has human editors, unlike Instagram or Facebook, which doesn't have human editors. LinkedIn has human editors. So a human editor found my post and posted it in LinkedIn News here. And my posts quite often get featured in LinkedIn News. So when you're timely with your posts, so you're, you're, you're catching onto a trend like right now, this little girl is me is trending. So if you post with a trending topic, then you will get picked up by the LinkedIn editors if your post is engaging enough. So you wanna make sure you're good at what you're doing, but you wanna also make sure that you're timely with what you're doing and that you're catching on to the trends that are going on in the LinkedIn universe. Here are some tools I use to create my pictures and my videos on LinkedIn. You can try it out and see how it goes. You can use the free version or the premium version. Uh, Canva is a fantastic tool. It, is, it gives you the power of becoming your own graphic designer. It's so easy with the templates to create this. InShot is fantastic for videos, um, even for, you know, I'm awful at creating videos, but even I managed to use InShot. So go ahead and try those. And the other, the final thought that I want to leave you with about LinkedIn is if you don't know what to post, if you don't know what content to post, don't worry about it. What you do is you start by commenting on other people's posts. And when you comment on other people's posts, you think it's not going to be a big deal, right? You just comment on their post, maybe they see it. This is so not true. Po comments on LinkedIn are where a lot of the gold is. So you can see this comment of mine on a LinkedIn, uh, it was a post by LinkedIn themselves. I commented on it and got 345 reactions. That's more than some of my own posts. So it's really amazing what you can do when you comment on other people's posts. It also gets you in front of the eyes of influencers. So if you're looking for a client, like say you want Lufthansa and you see that the CEO of Lufthansa has posted about something, go in and comment on his post. Comment on his post a few times and suddenly he'll start to notice you because people really care about their own content. So when you go in and comment on their, on their pieces, you really uh, get the eye of the person who's, who's commenting. And I've got so many clients by doing it this way. So when you've commented on someone's post, you've found someone, you've commented on their post, then you ask for a connection request and always make sure it's personalized. There are some tips on my LinkedIn profile on how you can do that. Um, and then you want to engage with them. Don't pitch to them straight away if you're, um, if you're someone who's looking for a sponsorship or whether you're looking for a client. You want to make sure you're engaging with them, have a conversation with them, take it offline, arrange a Zoom call or something, and then you can pitch to them. So here I am. This is the QR code back to you. Thank you very much for having me. And if you have any questions, you know, you can come along to my session and I will show you all the nitty gritty and how you can make LinkedIn work for you. Hold your, um, your mobile phone over the, cap the camera of your mobile phone over my uh, QR code and you will get to my LinkedIn profile. Thank you all very much for coming today.